Scientists have always made every effort to learn more and more about this immaculate cosmos. NASA and other organizations have sent hundreds of missions into space to learn more about the cosmos. During these excursions, they discovered some of the oddest things, and one of these pieces of information led to the results that led to a discovery. We're encased in a huge bubble. What is this bubble exactly? How did it come to be? And why are we confined within? These are the questions on everyone's mind. But after watching this video, they won't be. So stay tuned as we're going to talk about the fact that discovery in our solar system changes everything. Hello everyone! Welcome to Space Discovery. Subscribe to the channel for every single detail about the discoveries in the vastness of space. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon for new updates. Having said that, let's get started. After a 41-year journey, the Voyager 2 eventually passed the threshold that indicated the limit of the Sun's influence and reached interstellar space in November 2018. However, it did not complete its mission in interstellar space. It began transmitting data from outside the solar system. The data surprised astronomers since it was not what they had expected. Voyager 2 discovered that the density of space was growing as it traveled further away from the Sun. The density gradient was not what Voyager's first experience with it. Voyager 1 had crossed interstellar space six years previously and had felt the same sensation that its fellow craft was feeling today. This proved to scientists that Voyager 1 was correct and that something in space is causing a density gradient. To fully comprehend it, you must first comprehend the spatial constraints. A few distinct limits can be used to define the solar system's border. The heliopause is the one that Voyager probes past. The solar winds, which originate from the Sun, the center of our solar system, determine this limit. The heliopause is the point where the solar wind's outward pressure is no longer strong enough to push into the wind from interstellar space. The heliosphere encompasses the region inside the heliopause, which is shaped like a bubble. You could be thinking that space is a vacuum right now. Spoiler alert, it's not entirely true. The density of matter is incredibly low there, but it's still present. In the solar system, the typical proton and electron density is 3 to 10 particles per cubic centimeter. However, when you travel further away from the sun, it lessens. In the outer heliosphere, the density drops to roughly 0.002 electrons per cubic centimeter. There should be a drop in density as Voyager moves away. However, upon passing the heliopause at a distance of 122.6 astronomical units, they discovered something odd. At a distance of 119.7 astronomical units, Voyager 1 discovered a plasma density of 0.055 electrons per cubic centimeter, whereas Voyager 2 measured a plasma density of 0.039 electrons per cubic centimeter. This begs the issue of what has caused the density to rise so much. But before we answer the question, there's something more you should know. There is one heliosphere bubble and a bigger one that encompasses the smaller one. A brief question. What would you say if you were informed that the space around our solar system is a vacuum, devoid of intergalactic dust, gas or cloud? You may think they're insane, but they're correct. Astronomers at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics (CFA) and the Space Telescope Science Institute recently published a study in which they explain that all stars and star-forming areas within 500 light-years of Earth are on the surface of a bubble but not inside, implying that our solar system is engulfed by a giant, still-expanding cosmic bubble known as the local bubble, which spans 1,000 light years. The concept of a bubble isn't entirely new. Scientists have theorized about its existence for decades. This time, though, scientists have seen the net its form and its length. The local bubble is thought to have formed via a sequence of explosions, according to astronomers. Over the last 14 million years, explosions around the void center have launched gas beyond space, according to Catherine Zucker, the study's principal author and an astronomer at the Center for Astrophysics. The local bubble surface was produced when the shockwave accumulated gas and dust clouds into a thick, freezing hollow shell. Astronomers built a map of the bubble using data visualization tools. They revealed that at least 15 supernovae have to erupt to propel gas this far. On the bubble surface, the clouds of gas and ducts offered enough fuel for star formation. You might be wondering how we ended ourselves amid the bubble. If it was generated by supernovae explosions, Zhao Elvis, an astronomer at the University of Vienna, argues that our sun was far distant from the activity when the initial supernovae that generated the local bubble exploded. However, the sun's journey across the galaxy led it directly into the bubble some 5 million years ago. By chance, the sun now sets practically exactly in the middle of the sky. The Earth was nearly 1,000 light years distant when the local bubble first began to emerge. According to research astronomer Zucker, they estimated that the Earth entered the bubble roughly 5 million years ago. 
which is consistent with prior study estimations of radioactive iron isotope deposits in the Earth's crust from supernovae. When the bubble originally formed, it was traveling at around 16 miles per second, according to data obtained by the European Space Agency's Gaia. The bubble is currently expanding at a rate of 4 miles per second. This isn't the only bubble. To our surprise, there are several such clusters in space. Much as the stars on the surface of this bubble, Alyssa Goodman, study author and CFA astronomer, says that more star formation bubbles are expected to be discovered throughout the Milky Way. If large bubbles were not frequent across the galaxy, the Sun would not be at the center of one. Star forming areas are seen at bubble crossing, indicating that these bubbles are interacting with one another. As a result, the Milky Way takes on the appearance of extremely holy Swiss cheese, with holes blasted out by supernovae. Around the holes left by dead stars, new stars might emerge in the cheese. In an interview, Zucker even stated that the local bubble is just the one that we are now in. We believe the Sun and its history have passed through several super bubbles. The team now plans to map out additional cosmic bubbles to get a full 3D picture of their locations forms and sizes. Astronomers will ultimately be able to draw out bubbles and relationships to understand the function of dying stars and the formation of new ones. By mapping out where the bubbles lie in the vastness of space, astronomers may piece together how these bubbles serve as nurseries for stars, how the bubbles interact with one another, and how galaxies like the Milky Way developed through time. As we get closer to the rise in density, one theory is that the interstellar magnetic field lines get stronger as they pass through the heliopole. They might produce an electromagnetic ion cyclotron instability which would deplete the plasma and drape area. Voyager 2 measured a greater magnetic field than predicted when it passed through the heliosphere. Another theory claims that material being carried by the interstellar wind slows when it approaches the heliopause, causing a traffic bottleneck. The New Horizons spacecraft, which detected a weak ultraviolet light, may have noticed this. In 2018, a buildup of neutral hydrogen near the heliopause triggered it. Both views might be correct, but additional investigation is required. For the time being, regardless of density, the heliosphere protects humanity while the solar wind moves across space. It generates a rich space environment, complete with radiation and magnetic fields, which we return to the sun. This space environment is also influenced by interstellar cosmic rays and coronal mass ejections, which are concentrated clouds of solar material that erupt from the sun. The planets are surrounded by a complex environment that has a significant impact on the origin, development, and density of planetary systems. These rates can have a minor impact on flights flying near the poles, such as those flying between Europe and Asia and the United States. For one reason, our heliosphere acts as a massive shield, insulating the planets from the Milky Way's cosmic radiation. So after listening to all these, what do you suppose would have occurred if the bubble shield hadn't been present? What else do you think Voyager 2 would find out in our solar system? Let us know what you think in the comments area below. Having said that, that's it for now. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, then don't forget to press that thumbs up button and also the hot red subscribe button as well. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, peace.